Good morning, how are you guys doing? So today's Wednesday, day three of the week in the life of a game developer. I'm getting it down, aren't I? Remembering what it is. Mm. So, uh, yeah, hi, how you doing? So it's uh, 9.14 on Wednesday morning, July 20th, 2011. So yeah, I've got my Dr. Pepper today. Where is it? Get the label out. Mm-hmm. Oh, hang on. I, my program's just loading, so I can't sit. Anyway, there it is. Boom. Shadink. Dr. Pepper. I usually have my little video thing up there so I can actually see what you're seeing, so I can make sure it lines up, but my program just loaded up and completely went over it, so I couldn't see. So I hope that worked out for you. Because I, I didn't get to see it. Sorry. Alright, so, oh my gosh. So yesterday, yeah, did some more Max stuff on the levels and the like. Filled in a few of those questions for Corby. Uh, Nintendo Life, um, but have not finished those yet. Um, oh, and some um, Panic Crusher stuff, and some of that level stuff. Uh, actually, I want to do some more of that this morning as well. Got lots more proxy levels for the uh, for the milestone. But uh, yeah, no, the game, the Panic Crusher stuff is looking pretty cool actually. Um, the way it works is. Um, there's a planet surface area. Um, th there's multiple planets in the galaxy, and you start off in the planet surface. And uh, and how we're doing the planet surface is uh, it's kind of like Mario Galaxy in a way, where you know you actually see the spherical nature of the um, of the planet. So as you move, you know it kind of rotates to you, kind of thing. It's it's pretty cool. Um, and obviously in 3D it looks really neat. So you kind of wander around there, and that's kind of a safe area where you can talk to, um, you know, characters and stuff like that. And there's a shop, and you know, there's a gateway. There's um, uh, there's un uh, entrances uh, that could take you underground and, and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so what we're gonna have for the milestone is we've now got the entrance, you know, to the underground area on the planet's surface talk to a little dude up there and then you go underground and the levels are more kind of traditional more kind of flat once you get underground and um yeah so anyway you get a quest from the planet surface that's why you go underground so maybe to um you know rescue someone or find an item or or you know fight someone or whatever something like that so um yeah so we have the underground levels kind of working and the little mini map that kind of shows you your progress through that you know, underground area and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. So anyway, so I'm going to do... Um, the underground areas are split into different floors. So you start off on floor one, and then you have to walk around and find the, you know, the stairway kind of down to floor two and so on. So floor one is pretty much good to go at this stage anyway, just for the preliminary kind of implementation of it. Um, and now I'm, I'm going to proxy up um, floor two. So uh, yeah, no, pretty cool. Um, yeah, anyway, so Planet Crashers is looking nice, really cool. And, uh, oh, and you can customize your hero. So, um, it's kind of made up where you, you can customize the eyes, the mouth, the hair, clothes, and all that kind of stuff. And as I've shown you the artwork on Monday, but I'll show you again today, um, uh, the characters kind of look like that. Um, so they're quite varied, and they look cool. They look really cool. You know, I mean, you can see right there, that guy has that, that dude, those kinds of eyes. And then that guy has more of the crazy kind of weird looking eyes, but whatever. There's a bunch of different types of eyes and hair and mouths and tops, bottoms, blah, blah, blah. They look quite varied, but all in the same kind of style. Looks nice. So yeah, my hair's crazy today. Let's fix it. I'll use the camera as a mirror. There we go. Very nice. Um, yeah. So this is uh, the moment in the week where I start to think, oh hey, I need to contact publishers to try and uh, get our next game figured out. Because <laughs> we have, we will be working on Planet Crashes until the end of the year with Ignition, which is going to be cool. Um, we're finishing up Face Races now. Um, we kind of want to have, you know, two games going at once kind of thing. Uh, ID, or well, at least at least two, I should say. Uh, they're actually getting paid for, I should say. <laughs> like Mutant Muds, we're not really getting paid for, we're just doing it ourselves. Which is great, but um, you know we we'll get some money in as well. So uh, yes, every now and then, my I, I remind myself that yeah, I need to see uh, if I can secure the next game for us. So um, it's an interesting process. Actually, I remember at the beginning when we um, 
started, um, you know, Renegade Kid, really had zero contacts <laughs> in the industry as far as uh, publishers. Or really no idea of how to even contact them to say, hey, uh, we have a game, do you want to check it out? And stuff, and give us some money, and that kind of business. You know, what do you do, you know? So, um, yeah, so it's, and a lot of it was just uh, cold calls, you know, just calling them up, talking to the receptionist, um, asking to speak to their business development person, or looking, uh, you know, if, if their company directories and their website, which not a lot, of, some of them do, but not a lot of them do. Um, LinkedIn is another good kind of resource to kind of, um, you can, um, you know, you can type in company names and kind of, um, you know, positions on there and kind of see what comes up to see if you can find out someone's name within a company. So at least, you you know, when you spoke, speak to the receptionist, you can say, hey, can I speak to blah, blah. So at least you kind of you know, sound like you know what you're doing rather than, can I speak to you person that, that, that gives people money to make games? That'd be great, thanks, because you probably won't get to talk to them if you ask that. So, um, but now I have this big old, I have a document, you know, a big old document full of uh, contact information that I've gathered over the years. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a mixture of calling them up, um, or sending out emails with, uh, proposals or just information or whatever. Um, so and it's totally random, you know, it's crazy. There is certainly not a formula to it. There's no consistency whatsoever <laughs> in, in how one publisher works within itself, let alone how one publisher may compare to another. They're completely different. It's crazy. Our industry is very weird like that. It's just there's really not many rules that, that hold it together. It's pretty wild west uh, weird, which is uh, surprising and expected at the same time, really. I mean, the industry is pretty, um, uh, pretty young, you know, really. Um, and uh, But it has a lot of money in it, you know, so it has a lot of people, you know, who are supposedly professional and experienced, but um, some of them let their emotions get in the way of their judgment, and it makes it a little interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm probably going to do some of that today. Probably think about how to um, reach out, find uh, find someone. Because I mean, right now, like on the DS, we did all original games. You know, we did uh, Dementium, Moon, Dementium Two, ATV. Um, excuse me, uh, racing game and. Um, so then on 3DS, so far we've done Face Races, which is an original game, but it's not our game, it's Majesco's. All of our previous games were our games, we owned them. But this one we don't, it's Majesco's game. Um, Planet Crashes, we're making for Ignition. So that's kind of a license, it's really it's just their IP that they're hiring us to, to make for them. So, um, and that's cool, you know, but both games actually, uh, both publishers have given us a lot of freedom uh, to do what we want to do with those games. It's not like it's... Um, it's it's fun, you know. It's not like it's hard work or anything that's you know kind of like oh this you know this is not fun or whatever. It's it's cool. They're both good games. Um, and Mutant Mars, of course, is purely our creation, which is kind of what we're used to doing, you know, with the Minty and Movement ATV. But anyway, so one thing we're working on actually is a is a new 3DS game that we will be announcing next week. Um, we're kind of what we're doing is we're developing it internally ourselves just a little bit and um, so we don't have a publisher we're not getting paid to do it and um, so we're gonna uh, make a gameplay video of it and uh, some nice fancy looking artwork and all that kind of business and uh, get some news pieces out next week uh, through some uh, some lovely websites to try and get some interest uh, from you guys and also from uh, potential publishing partners uh, hopefully they see it and go, oh, that's pretty cool, yeah, I'll give you some money to finish that off. <laughs> uh, craziness. How it works, right, is typically, well, this is one of the way it can work, I should say. This is not the way it works, the, way, the only way it works, the way it can work. You know, the way we do it is you go to a publisher, it's either an original game like Dementium, etc., um, or it's a game that's theirs and they want someone to make it, like um, true, uh, like um, Planet Crashes and Face Races. Um, so, in either case, for us, what we do is we come up with uh, a budget of how much that game is going to cost. And obviously that's based, that isn't based on, yeah, I need a new Ferrari or anything like that. I don't have a Ferrari, by the way. You know what, I don't even, I don't even have a car right now, I kind of sold it recently. I need to get another one. 
anyway. Um, it's uh, it's based on you know the well a lot of times the, the publisher will say hey here's much here's how much we want to spend on it. A lot of times they won't say that because they don't want to tell you that or they don't know or whatever. They just want you to give them a budget and then they'll just cut it in half and say yeah this. Um, but it's based obviously on a team size and how long you need them for. So if someone gets paid, for example, you know whatever, let's just say, hundred bucks a month, which of course no one would be paid that because that'd be horrible. But if you got paid a hundred bucks a month for that one person, you know you need them for six months, six hundred bucks, and then you know you want to add some other stuff in there for overhead and all the rest of it. And you know and if you have six people or three people or ten people or twenty people, whatever, you just kind of add them all up, put them on there, and before you know it, you're spending like thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars um, to make a game, which is kind of crazy. We don't very often get into the millions of dollars for uh, handheld games, but uh, um, but it's certainly hundreds of thousands it can be anyway, and um, which is awesome, it sounds great, but you know, it's all spoken for, you know, the people get it, it's not like it's like, great, I've got loads of money, no, it's not mine, it's, for, it's to pay the team and the company to, to make it. Um, so we present that, you know, budget and milestone and stuff to the publisher. And then they, they come back and either approve it or they don't. Um, but anyway, once it's approved and you're good to go, what that is, is that's an advance on royalties. So, you know, they pay you X amount. Let's say it's, you know, $10,000. Obviously, it'd be more than that, but let's just say it's that. But, you know, let's just say it's 500000 Let's go crazy. Whoa. So they pay you $500,000 to make a game. And then um, what happens is you have a percentage of royalties that you'll get when the game sells. So let's say it's, you know, 20%, whatever. Um, the publisher will take your 20% until that 500000 is paid back, and then you'll get your 20% yourself after the advance has been paid back. So it kind of works like that. But the nice thing is, if the game doesn't sell enough to even pay back that original amount, it's not like the developer owes the publisher that money. That's a risk that the publisher takes. Um, and uh, so that's good. That would be bad if, if, we, if the developer actually owed the publisher that money. Yeah. No. That wouldn't happen. I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't take on that business model. That'd be bad. So anyway, so yeah, it's just a calculated risk on the, on the publisher's um, case to, uh, to do that. You know, and that's why they're very careful about the budgets that they choose because they know that they have to make sure that the game that they're making and they're going to sell will make that money back otherwise what's the point in doing it right because uh, if, the, if a publisher keeps on doing that and they don't make the money back then eventually they can't stay in business so crazy anyway so there you go so I'm going to do a little bit of that thinking about how to hopefully pimp out to some publishers today Got, like I said, I've got some plan crusher stuff to do. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to any mute and mud stuff today. I hope so, but um, I don't know. Face Racers is in Bugsville. Uh, I've actually got a few extra ones yesterday. Yay! So, um, which is good. I mean, they're important ones, you know, but um, so they have to be fixed. But um, yeah, so that's still in Bugs Land. Not fun. Um, just when it drags on, which it has been a little while. Yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, that's right. So I think tomorrow I'll try and maybe show you a little bit more kind of, you know, making assets kinds of stuff like I did yesterday. But today I've just been waffling about stuff, haven't I? So hopefully it hasn't been completely boring for you. Sorry about that. But I did have Dr. Pepper, so that that spices it up a little bit. Where is it? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. the logo in there properly today. Yeah, that's it. Dr. Pepper! Checks in the mail. One dollar. Coming my way. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Have a fabulous day, and I will see you tomorrow.